What's up, everybody? It is Deck Tech Time. I'm your host, Cedric Phillips, and I am joined by the Alpha Frog himself. It is Gavin Thompson. Gavin, how are you? I'm doing great. Are you excited for Paper Play? Your Magic absolutely. Online end boss, Paper Play. I'm absolutely excited. I'm a little nervous. I haven't played with paper cards in such a long time, so I'll have to make sure I don't drop my deck when I'm shuffling. You know what? I believe in you. Now, <laughs> this deck that you were playing here this weekend, there's not like... I guess I would say there's not a ton of shuffling, but there is a lot of finagling. Yes. There's a lot going on here yeah. with the boogeyman of the format. One could argue the most powerful deck in the format here in Mono Green Devotion. I think a deck that everybody knows about coming into the event. The question is how many people are going to play it and how well is it going to do. You have staked your claim. You said, I'm doing this, and I'm ready to win with it. My first question for you is why? I feel like it's, it's good against... Uh, all of the random decks that people might bring. It's hard to predict what the metagame is going to be, so I think that everybody's just going to bring what decks they're comfortable with, and Mono Green is very good at just beating a spread of decks. And I also think it's going to be well-positioned against the winner's metagame, which I expect to be Lotus Field, Rakdos Sacrifice, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, let's dive in. Let's take a look at all these green cards. I'm going to get the easy stuff out of the way first. 13 Forest, Couple Lair of the Hydras, Besaju, Nykthos, Shrine of Nyx, kind of ties the entire room together. One of the most powerful cards in modern. That stuff's simple. Elvish Mystic, Land of War Elves, that's your early mana acceleration. Oath of early play as well. Sylvan Carry added another additional mana source here that some people play, some people don't. Why are you playing that one here this weekend? The Hexproof keyword is very important because decks that are trying to beat you they try to kill your early mana generation and then leave you stranded with cards in hand. They can't kill this, so it just makes sure that you're casting your more expensive spells. Okay, so additional mana source, in addition to the ones that we always see, I can't forget about Wolf Willow, Wolf Willow Haven as well, because that's another one that people really can't kill. Old Growth Troll, Kiora, those are your three drops. Cavalier of Thorn, Storm the Festival, those are your big plays. Now, let's talk about some unique one of fun ofs here, okay? The Boat, Sky Sovereign, Council Flagship. Let's start here. Just kind of good text on this card, right? Yes. Uh, nothing really beats it in the air. It's just the biggest, most effective flying creature in the format. It dominates a lot of the creature decks. And versus just everything, not knowing what people are going to bring, I feel like it's just a generically strong card. You can plus Karn on it, so you don't actually need a creature to crew it. And then... It just goes to town. <laughs> well, if we're going to talk about a generically powerful card, this one doesn't rule the air. This one rules the ground. I'm talking about Cityscape Leveler. Yes. This mythic rare, which I know you have one in your sideboard as well that we're going to get to. Most people only play it in the sideboard. You're starting one in the main deck here. Tell me why. Uh, I noticed we're boarding it in in a lot of matchups. Why not just have one in the main? Uh, you can mill over it with a Cavalier, which allows you to unearth it from the graveyard. And that's more likely than you just drawing it and casting it because you see so many cards when you mill the Cavalier, you're looking at five. And having an answer to permanence, obviously, always good. Yeah. Uh, I expect people could be bringing the new Elish Norin, and that card shuts off most of my deck, and I want <laughs> okay. an answer to it. <laughs> okay, well, this is an answer to that card, so you're already thinking a little bit ahead here. Now, the last one. Maybe the best card in the deck. I know, I know I said Nykthos might be that card, but Karn is no slouch either. And with Karn, the great creator, comes a slew of cards, 15 yes. of them to be exact. So we're going to transition here very quickly to the sideboard, of course, right? Not to say that Karn's other abilities don't matter, because they obviously do. But this is the bread and butter of this deck, is you get 15 additional cards to work with effectively in your main deck mm -hmm. because of Karn. We could go over all of these for a very long time, but we're only going to take a select few. Let's kick things off with the Damping Sphere that's hiding out over here. What exactly is that for? Uh, specifically for Lotus Field, they are going to sacrifice two lands. You wish for it, and then they only have one mana out of their thing. And also, they need to cast multiple spells in a turn, and the taxing makes it so they cannot combo. Okay, so that's number one. Next up, the Stone Brain, getting certain cards out of certain decks. Uh, yeah, it's also good against Lotus Field. It's good against Blue-White. It's good in the Mirror. You can take their Karns if they don't have one in play. You can't when they have it because you can't activate it. But taking away their Karns or their Storm the Festivals can just make sure that they have no way to come back or win. It puts you solidly ahead. We got ourselves a new one here in the Filgree Silex. What is this thing doing here? Uh, it's the same card as Ratchet Bomb, except it has another ability on it. Honestly, the other ability doesn't really matter, but you can uh, use the Chain Veil and Kiora and put as many oil counters on it. So 
you can technically kill them this way. You can kill them with the stone brain too by exiling their whole deck. Um, it's just there's no reason to play this, or there's no reason to play Ratchet Bomb when you can play this. Okay. So. Um, I'm going to come find you if you deal 10 to somebody with that card, just so <laughs> that you know. Uh, and the last one I'm going to touch on here very quickly uh, is a Seekish Chariot, which is a card that we've seen players try in the sideboard here, but not seeing it a ton. So why is this one here? Oh, this card is just, it's hard to get more out of four mana. And when you're playing against a lot of these decks that are focusing on stopping you from doing your big game plan, oftentimes just coming back and being a mid-range deck, they're not prepared to beat you doing that kind of thing. And you're getting so much value out of this card. It's just, look at those cats. <laughs> <laughs> well, with any luck, you're going to be casting this card and making a lot of cats. As you see here with the sideboard, there's a lot of different things this deck can do. It can make infinite mana with the Chain Veil and Pestilent Cauldron. It can search for a land via Dark Steel Citadel and a whole bunch more. And with any luck, we're going to watch you do that a lot here Hopefully. this weekend. He is Gavin Thompson. That is Mono Green Devotion. Gavin? Best of luck. Thank you.